Okay. Recursive sequences. What a recursive sequence is, is each term is determined by one or more of the previous terms. So you're using the previous term and you're plugging it into a series to get future terms. It's not arithmetic or geometric, but it kind of follows a similar pattern. Okay, so our first term is equal to 5. To get the next term, our 1 plus 1 term, or our n, n plus 1 term, we get 2 a sub n, which is 1, plus 7, meaning I'm going to plug in the previous value of the previous term. So 2 times 5 plus 7, and we get 17. And yes, I had to look at my notes for that. To get to the next term, we have 2 plus 1, because that would get us our third term. So again, that's telling me my n. So it's telling me I'm taking the term previous, which is the second term, plus 7. So we have 2 times 17 plus 7. And that's going to get me 41. And this is our third term, because I did 2 plus 1. This was our second term. This was our first term. So to get the fourth term, or the 3 plus 1 term, I take 2 times my third term plus 7. So 2 times my third term, which was 41, plus 7, and that's going to equal 89. To get my fifth term, or my a sub, because I need to change this to n plus 1, so what plus 1 gets me 5? 4 plus 1 gets me 5. 2, a sub 4 plus 7, which is 2 times the fourth term, plus 7, my fourth term was 89. And that gets me 185. Okay, so let's look at this real quick. Let's look at this. Our first term was 5. Our second term was 17. Our third term was 41. Our fourth term was 89. And our fifth term was 185. There's a reason I listed all these out. Because in a minute, I'm going to be giving us the values of the terms and we need to come up with this formula. And I want to show you guys something, that there really is a pattern. Okay? And all the ones I'm going to give you are going to be in a, I'm going to call it kind of like an arithmetic. So if you subtract those two terms, we get 12. Subtract those two terms, we get 24. Subtract those two terms, we get 48. Subtract those two terms, we get 96. Notice what's happening here. To get, we're multiplying by 2. So there is kind of a hidden pattern to it. And that's where that 2 is coming from. Okay, so in a few sections, in a few minutes when we go through writing them, when I give you these, that's where I'm getting that 2 from. Okay? Okay, our next example. And I added this example in just because I there's an example like this in the book and I really like it. And I want you guys to recognize a few things. This is now n plus 2. So you need two initial terms because you use the previous term, or you use two terms ago, and then the previous term. So we're given a sub 1 is equal to 3. a sub 2 is equal to negative 4. I need, now need to find the a sub 3 term but I need to change that to the a sub n plus 2 term because n plus 2, that's going to help me find my n. My n then is what number 
plus 2 gets me to 3, it's going to be 1. So in this case, our n equals 1. So that means we have negative 2 times the a sub 1 term, since n equaled 1, minus 1 times the a sub n plus 1, which is our second term. Our second term, okay, and now simplifying that out, uh, what do we get? We get negative 2. Actually, let me go through that. Negative 2, I plug in a sub 1, which is 3, minus 1 times by a negative 4. Simplifying that out, we get a negative 2. Now to get to our fourth term, which is our a n plus 2 term, Okay, what number plus 2 gets me back to 4? Well, that's going to be 2. So now we have negative 2 times some a term minus 1 times some other a term. Now, a n is 2. So going back to the original formula up here, a sub n, if n is 2, we're looking at our second term. And then when I plug in n plus 1, that's going to get me to my third term. So notice the pattern. You're using the two previous terms. Okay, guys? That's all you're doing. You're using the two previous terms. Don't overthink it. I feel like I'm over analyzing this. Okay? So now it's just a matter of plugging in. a sub 2. a sub 2 is negative 4. Minus 1 times by a sub 3, a sub 3 was a negative 2. So simplifying that guy out, we get a 10. Our fifth term is our a sub 3 plus 2, because 3 plus 2 gets me 5, and that 3 is going to tell me my n. So I have negative 2 times our third term, minus 1, times by the fourth term. Plugging that in. a sub 3 was negative 2. a sub 4... Oh, a sub 4 was 10. And so then we get a negative 6. Now I'm not going to worry about showing you the pattern like I did the last time, but let me just write out what our five terms are so that you guys can see it. So that's what all of our terms look like. Okay, writing recursive formulas. Okay, and this goes back to the previous example like I was talking about, that first example. When I gave us the term numbers, okay, or the term values at the very end, and I was like, how do we get everything? In most cases, I'm going to say this is an, in quotes an arithmetic because there is a hidden pattern to these. Find the first difference. Okay, so subtract those values. So 11 minus 4 is going to be 7. 25 minus 11 is 14. 53 minus 25 is 28. 109 minus 53, 56. So those were the differences. I'm going to, and I wish I, you guys could see me because I'd be in quotes. But now let's look at this. How do I get to those? Minus 2, or I'm sorry, times 2, times 2. So going back to the previous example, I'm going to flip back to it real quick. Remember, I had a times 2 over here. That's how I got that 2 there. So when we're writing our recursive formula, you always have to tell them what the first term is. But then to get my n plus 1 term, okay, Figure out what this multiplier is, that we figured out that multiplier is 2. Okay, we're going to use the previous term plus some number. I'm going to call that number C. Okay, so it's plus C. 
I need to solve for that C. But let's look at what we have. We know our first term is 4. We know the second term is 11. So I know A sub 2 is equal to 11, and that equals 2 times our first term plus some number C. So I have 11 equals 8 plus C, solving for C. we get 3. I was looking at my notes and I noticed I had a mistake in my notes. So that's what was going on there. I was confused. I confused myself. So now we know our formula for our n plus 1 term is equal to 2, that number that we ended up multiplying by, a sub n plus the number c, which in this case is 3. Now you can always double check, okay? And you always have to tell me what the first term is. When you plug in the first term there, 2 times 4 is 8 plus 3. That's 11. So now take this next term. Okay, 2 times 11. Well, that's 22 plus 3 gets me 25. So it looks like our pattern's working. Okay, so keep that in mind. There are your lesson questions. Please make sure they're submitted on time. And again, this is like the first example I did. This is like that last example I did, and I really want you guys to try that because you need to practice how to do these. Look back at this previous example and follow the pattern for this example. And again, please make sure they are submitted on.